Thanks so much for downloading the episode on the show today. We discuss our hate for technology. We also discuss my daughter's win passing her driver's test. This plus our ugly and awkward moments of the week. Thank you so much. Shop lipandclip.com. Enjoy the show. It's another uncensored look at the world around you from sisters who will say just about anything to anyone at any time. It's the Uggs. Jamie. Did you drop meat in your lap? Paula. I'm satisfied with this position. Why do we need to get all crazy right now? Uncensored as always, it's time for the Ugly Truth. Welcome to The Ugly Truth. It is episode 317. Ugh. Ugh. Welcome. Oh, oh, and we are sisters who podcast. God, we are so awkward, Paul. I swear to God, we can't do anything. That's an awkward line. I still protest. Formal protest? <laughs> Informal protest? We're just trying to let everyone know who's listening to the show that we are, in fact, siblings. We are sisters and we are also podcasting together. So there's not, believe it or not, I have done some research. There are very, very few sisters who podcast that are actually sisters. Usually when you see sisters who podcast, it's women of color Oh, or nuns. There, there absolutely is a podcast where nuns do a podcast. Sisters of the Cloth. Yes. So they're Sisters of the Cloth. Cloth? <laughs> Claws. <laughs> See, I can't even say it. <laughs> sisters. <laughs> Shut up. Your body's rejecting it. <laughs> Physically rejecting the word. And then us. <laughs> so very few. Or they go, we're sisters from another mister. You know, they're not real sisters or they're right. sorority sisters. Oh, my God. So we're actual sisters, siblings who, who come from the same parents who podcast. So anyway, really quickly, because I wanted to tell you, I wanted to complain about my husband, Daryl, producer Dub, for just a second. And then it's going to segue into your electrical issues. But... I thought I started my period and it's it would be three days early. I feel like I'm OK, I'm spotting, but I'm not full blown on the rag or anything like that. Mm-hmm. And so I turned down sex last night and I'm really mad because I woke up this morning and I'm still just kind of spotting. And I'm like, God damn it, because, you know, the, the, the brutal reality of, of being on your period is you're super duper horny and oh, it yeah. sucks. Well, I don't know about you, but for me, I am. And so it really sucks because, look, we've all done the messy sex. Everyone does it at Mm -hmm. some point in your life, either accidentally because you're super horny and you don't realize that your period's on its way, which is exactly why you're so horny. Mm -hmm. Or you're just like, you know what? I'm just spotting. It's fine. Just put a towel down. We'll deal with it. Right. But so I was really pissed because I'm like, God, I could have gotten laid last night. And 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 I didn't. I woke up this morning and I'm still just barely spotting. So I don't understand the spotting thing. I've never been, I've never done that. You don't spot before you start? uh Uh-uh. Day one's like a warning. I mean, it's still (laughs) period, but it's just like, this is a warning. Day two is like, you know, the gates have opened. Yeah. For me, I spot. And then usually I wake up in the morning and it's like, welcome to hell, Jamie. For the next three days, you will feel like you're dying and you feel like a noodle with nothing in it, you know? Yeah, that's usually pretty but, much. Yeah, so for whatever reason, I but I've always I've always spotted because it's almost like warning, warning. It's like the Jaws music is starting. Oh my god! You know what I mean? It's like dun 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 dun, and then suddenly <laughs> day two is like, it's like, ah! it's like that. We're gonna need a bigger boat. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, that's unfortunate. But I was downstairs, and um, this is the second. Uh, time in a row where I create our outline with our items that we submit. And I like to print out my outline because in addition to the notes that you give me, I write my own notes. Well, you don't need to see my notes. Mm -hmm. You just need to, you know, you have your own idea of how you keep track of what you're going to talk about. So I have all these notes at the bottom to remember to tell you about the items that we're discussing. And so I print mine out so I can write down stuff or whatever. Right. And so I think, I don't think I, I don't know if I talked about it, but our printer was out of ink. (laughs) We had a ton of black ink, but no color. And as we all know in the world of retail, 
the printer will not work until you spend seventy five dollars on print on ink for every color. You know, know. they're not gonna they're not gonna allow you just to use the full bl- black cartridge. You know, you have to have all of them for it to operate. I know, I know. You can't just print black and white. And it pisses me out. Well, you can, but it still requires all the colors for some reason. And if we if we remember when we're kids, when you put all the colors together, it makes black. So apparently, <laughs> that's they 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 use that mentality in printers. So it's just uh, business. That's what it is. Yeah, it's money. And so uh, Daryl went and purchased the ink, and so it sat in the bag for a week. And I said, oh, well, I guess I'm supposed to do this since I'm me and the children are the only ones that ever use the printer. I guess this is my responsibility. Now, the only reason that I make the assumption that he will do it is because he does everything techie in this house. I don't do anything. I don't know when the when the Internet goes out and he's traveling. I call him and I say, what button do I have to push to watch Netflix? I just want to know how to watch Netflix or whatever. Mm -hmm. He's like, you can you can get it on the app. And I'm like, I don't have the app. I just want to turn on my TV and watch a show. How do I do that? Right. Into these ridiculous arguments. And so I'm like, well, I can do the printer, you know, so I did the ink. And of course, it took me longer because I forgot about the fucking lids that you have to remove. Oh, the little stickers that you have to peel off and i had the stupid thing upside down and i almost broke the printer because yeah. i had the cartridges and i so then of course who who's getting i'm getting angry at is not myself for my inadequacy is that producer dub did not do it mm-hmm. and now i have to do it so i did it and but the problem is is that we had this outage last week and the printer is on the wi-fi and so it's offline now as i was telling you before the show the printer's offline and because it's an older printer, it requires some kind of reboot of some kind. And I don't even know what it is, but I asked him today. So I had to send my outline to an email so that I could read it <laughs> because I have no idea. I, uh, there have been times where I'll take screenshots of it on my phone just so that I have it. Super ridiculous. Look, life finds a way. That's okay, like I've, tiny of tiny. I have an iPad. I mean, I can do it, but... Is your printer the kind of thing like once you put the ink in, it slides back and forth like five times? Yeah, it clean. It has to clean itself. And, you know, it would print a tester copy to make sure everything's aligned, but it's offline. So it doesn't. <laughs> One time I got so frustrated with a printer, I threw it against a wall like five times. Oh, I bet that felt good. <laughs> it did, but it made a big, like, chunk out of the plaster on the wall. Well... Of course. So Victor came home and he saw that and he's like, well, what happened here? (laughs) I'm just like, what do you think? (laughs) Printer issues. You can completely relate to those guys from Office Space where they take the printer out to the middle of the field and just beat the shit out of it. I know. PC load letter. What the fuck does that mean? God. I would just love to do that sometimes. Well, there's just, I am convinced there are just some printers that are just not compatible. They just. Yeah. They they just don't work. No. And I hate them all. I hate technology. I am old school. I've always been old school. I, if I could, I would have a fucking razor phone. You know, I every time I have to get a new smartphone, Daryl gets practically erect when we get new new technology in the house. And I'm just like, I don't even want to look at it. I hate it because I have to relearn everything. And this is not something that has happened as I've gotten older. This has been my life since I can remember. Mm-hmm. I, I I didn't you know mom bought a computer back in the day and I'm, I I must have kicked it or put pushed it a million times before I finally decided to try to sit down and deal with it. I just don't like it you know that fu- freaking dot matrix thing we used to mm-hmm. have. Eee! 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 God, do you remember? I do. It was in your room. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Having you my stupid resume on that thing. Oh my god. God, so I can't annoying. believe you, we turned resumes in with those things. <laughs> what choice did we have? Kinko's didn't exist yet. It's That's like, true. What are we going to do? I mean, those giant copiers. I mean, and even so, you still had to print something out to have them make a copy for you. You know? Well, then God. your son finally finished it off and made her get a new one. Yeah. <laughs> what did he do? What did he stick something in a he hard drive? He shoved a bunch, a bunch of business cards in the hard drive. That's right. Into the floppy disk slot. <laughs> he put in a bunch of business cards. That's right. She's like, well, I guess this is the end of this. And it was that, it was that lovely skin color. <laughs> Gross. Everything was either gray or taupe colored. Not even. T- yeah, it was kind of a taupe color. It was like an off white or something. Yeah. 
I but I've always hated it. So like I'm sitting here and he's on a phone call. He's working, and so I'm sitting here and I'm I'm copying pasting my outline on this digital thing, and I'm just being hateful in my mind. And I'm sure it's hormones as well, you know. But I'm just being hateful in my mind, going, "See what I have to put up with." And I'm and I was thinking, when he dies, I'm reverting back to the old school ways of doing things. I'm using handwriting. I'm sending letters. I am well. I might. I probably won't be calling people. <laughs> But I will text. No, I'll just end up with a pigeon on my front porch with a, <laughs> with a letter tied to its neck. <laughs> Around its little leg. <laughs> if you want to get a hold of mom, you better send the carrier pigeon because she has God. she has sworn off technology since dad died. Nobody wants to touch those things. <laughs> <laughs> They're filthy. <laughs> Maybe if it's a crow, if I'll just get like an, I'll get a message crow that will oh, bring me great. trinkets along with messages. God, that'll be my way of life. Suddenly, your hair turns white, and you're turning. You're wearing black lipstick. Okay, I have to tell you something, and I'm only telling you because you're my sister. I think, and I pulled it out already, but I think I have a gray hair in my eyebrow. Oh, and I'm really distraught about it. Like I'm really distraught about it because I gray or is it white? It doesn't look gray. It's just lighter than all the other ones. Okay, and it kind of sticks out a little bit. So I pulled it. And I'm in. This is new because, genetically speaking, we don't have a lot of gray hair in our female line. No. Our, our grandmother didn't turn gray till she was in her 80s. Our grandmother on our father's side never went gray. She had dark brown hair her whole life. I think she had a streak of gray along her widow's peak on one side. It's kind of like that lady from What Not to Wear. Oh right, yeah, yeah. She had one little patch of gray, and that's it. We are very fortunate in the gray hair area. Well, gray is like wiry and, you know, it's a different texture. It was thicker. It was just different, Paula. I, I, I wish I could lie to myself, but I'm just not that way. It's like if I felt a lump <laughs> in my breast, I couldn't say, oh, it's nothing. I mean, I know this is something different. I know my body better than anyone in my in the world. And I'm just so, I'm really obsessed over it. I'm obsessed. Because if it comes back, then I'll know. Then I'll know. I don't know what to oh. do. I'm. I feel like I'm melting. I just don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it at all. Well, you just pluck it like the rest of the other unsightly hairs on your body. Yeah, and you know what's funny is that even if I wanted to be really vain and go get my brows tinted, which I used to do because I I don't have a lot of hair anyway. Yeah, I don't um, either. I'd get them tinted so there'd be some kind of structure on my forehead, <laughs> and even if I had them tinted, it would stick out differently. You know what I mean? Because gray hairs are, are, like you said, they're stiffer or something. Yeah, kind of wiry. Maybe that's why Daryl looks like um, <laughs> the professor on Rick and Morty when he wakes up in the morning because he has a lot of gray hair. <laughs> just sticks out everywhere. <laughs> and I'm like, good morning, Rick. He's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Who's Rick? You're like, never mind. <laughs> Pickle Rick! Oh my gosh, that's so funny. So what's with your electrical issues? <laughs> <laughs> so lately, Ryan and Victor have been playing Call of Duty. Yes, with, a new one. New one came out. With the blood off, because that was my only caveat. Is, well, that's is that fair. I don't like this game, and so... They've been playing that like, you know, every free moment they have because they oh, just yeah, they're think obsessed. It's, they think it's so fun. Yeah. And so that messes up everything. Like I couldn't even find my headphones today. And I asked Ugh. Ryan because he's homesick and I'm like, where are my headphones? Oh, he's, I like, was using them. he's like, check the bottom drawer, believe the, um, underneath the PlayStation. And I'm like, my headphones should never be with <laughs> the rest of the population. <laughs> no, these are hermetically sealed every week. <laughs> right. So I found them under there and I'm just like, first of all, who was using these? Mm. You know, they only get used with permission. So mm -hmm. Besides that, this morning I woke up and took Olivia to school and then I was, came back and I was sitting on the couch and I was going to turn the news on just to see, you know, what kind of crisis was going on now. <laughs> and yes. I couldn't find a channel or like a like a HDMI like thing. Yeah. That had the TV on it. And so I'm just oh. like, what the heck? I'm like, where's the TV? Oh, they had it on the AUX channel so they could play. Or something. But the rest of them should have worked. You right. Know? Or some of them should have worked. I don't know. I just, you know, scroll through. Because there's, you know, there's SmartCast and HDMI 1, 2, mm. 3, 4. That sounds, and... like, uh, that sounds like math and something that I don't want to deal with. So I have to scroll through and see, like, which one. And half the time I don't even know which one our TV's on. And yeah. so... 
I couldn't figure out, so I just threw the clicker, and I'm just like, whatever. I guess I'm not watching TV today until Ryan wakes up. <laughs> See, that's my life. That is my life. Because then it you- told me check your cable, and I'm like, I'm not checking anything. Oh, so. God. See, this is this is exactly what I'm talking about, Paula. That is my life. So because I'm a simple person, I I know it doesn't seem like I would be. But I am not as high maintenance as I appear to be. I like nice things, but I'm not difficult. Of course, Daryl roars with laughter when he hears that. But it's true. I was sitting making food for the family because they must feed daily. Mm -hmm. And I was listening on my iPhone to music or a podcast or something. Mm -hmm. And Daryl comes in and witnesses this and thinks it's a problem. Now, he has done this to me. I can't even count how many times. He turns on the Alexa or the television because now it's all attached. And so he's like, honey, you can listen to this literally on any other device. You don't have to listen to this on your phone. And I'm like, well, what's wrong with just listening to it on my phone? I'm, I'm satisfied. I'm just sitting here quietly (laughs) minding, minding my own business, listening to something on my own by myself. And he comes in and he turns on, you know, that everything is like, you know, Dolby sound and it's on all this. He goes, and then when you're done, you can just say, Alexa, stop. And I'm like, oh God, my, see, now we have an Alexa, stop. Yeah. Right. God damn it. I turned it on on accident. <laughs> God. See? It's like having sex. You're like, I'm satisfied with this position. Why do we need to get all crazy right I now? I really don't want to change it up right now. I'm close. It's right. fine. This is right. good. And the fact that I even had to tell you means it's over. So, like, I've was, lost it now. It's over. So, I said, I really d- I appreciate what you're trying to do. You're excited because I'm using some kind of technology, but I really don't need it. He's like, all right, fine. And then we get into a fight. Then I'm irritated. And then he's like, I was just trying to help you. You know, I'm like, I didn't ask for your help, nor did I need it. Did I have a sign around my neck that says I need help? God. And it's like, it's almost like the new, okay. And and Daryl is not like this. He is not a chauvinist in any way, really. You know that. Yeah. But it's almost like the updated version of mansplaining. It's like, I don't need assistance with technology. Okay. I, I've got this. I don't need your help. If I need your help, I will absolutely ask for it in a frustrating tone, but I don't need it now. Okay. I'm just chopping. I'm just chopping carrots. I'm just listening to my little device by myself. Yeah. But a man will come in and go, oh no, there's a bigger and better way to do this. And he'll come in and just do it without asking. I and know. It, that happens all the time. And it does. Victor and I like got into like a not even an argument. I just let it go because I'm mm. like, I don't really feel like fighting with you right now. Yeah. Like, I just, I don't want to do it. And right. it's not worth it. No. And so he's like, what? That's all you have to say? And I'm like, yeah, pretty <sighs> much. Don't challenge me on this <laughs> I butthead. Just, I don't have the energy. Yeah, You're not worth like, it. No, not worth the effort. And that's worse. So, and so bye. But, you know, we got into this argument when we first moved into this house. Mm-hmm. We had two trash cans, one for recycle, one for trash. Mm-hmm. And one was black, one was white. All right. And so I thought it would be, you know, like second nature to say white trash. Yes. Black recycle, you know, like yes. n- no, n- no rhyming on the recycle part, but white trash. Like, yeah, you're going to remember sense. white trash. Yes. And he's just like, well, I just think it makes more sense to have, you know, blah, blah, blah. I don't even know what his reasoning was. I wasn't even paying attention. Like, well, no one asked you. <laughs> and so for whatever reason now, the recycle goes in the white bin. What? And the trash goes in the black bin. Is nothing a power struggle? Is everything? <laughs> everything. A pissing contest? <laughs> everything. That would make me so angry, Paula. I, I mean, I would die on that hill. I'm not kidding. I would die on that hill. I'd be like, what happened here? I wanted it to be white trash, goddammit. <laughs> and then I shot him. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> That's, th- that is one of those things that drives a woman to utter insanity. It really is. I don't know. I don't even know where I'm going with all of this, but oh, well. I know what it reminded me of. Malia, my baby uh, child. She's not a baby, obviously. Mm -hmm. She's 18 now. She passed her driver's test yesterday. Yay! Which, in my heart of hearts, I knew she would pass. I taught her how to drive. I've taught all of my children how to drive, and they always pass. First round, no problem. Did Um, she get 100%? No, she missed nine. Oh, okay. Um, But it was... 
nerves based on the the notes it was nerves she was a little a little rickety with her steering uh you know just a couple of things that you know when you're nervous you kind of over correct a little bit or you're just you straighten out a little bit more uh tougher than you would when you're confident and normal mm-hmm. well I, I got an 87 when i when i would went so i passed i missed 12 and you can only miss 13 <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah, and it was all speed. I, I did everything else flawlessly, <laughs> but I, he said I had to knock you down three times, and it's four points each for speeding. In fact, Dang. at one point, we were going down the road, and he said, what's the speed limit? And I go, uh, 45? He's like, no, it's 35. And I went, oh, oops. Yeah, I slowed down, and we pulled in. He goes, I'm passing you. <laughs> However... You need to pay attention to the speed limits because you sped more than 10 miles an hour or almost 10 miles an hour over the speed limit three times. And actually, you're supposed to auto fail at three, but I didn't go over 10 miles over the speed limit. So that's why he went ahead and passed me because it was almost like five or six over the speed limit. And I thought I was doing good. I thought that I was staying, keeping my speed low. In your mind, you're like cruising. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I got out and I said, I said, oh, I passed. And mom's like, oh, thank God. I mean, she was so over it. I was 16. She, she was, was so driving. relieved to have someone else drive everyone around. Yes. And so when I posted that Malia passed, our friend listener trip who he goes oh my god my mom was so happy when i passed because then somebody could go the he, he even said this he goes get the list for the grocery store ready oh that was like our first chore we it was food for less go to the store we need milk we need eggs and bread you know go and i i was telling Millie in the car on our way to the dmv which that's why i found that comment so hysterical i said when i got my license the first thing my mom said was oh thank god you can go to the grocery store And then she would say, we need milk. Your sister needs bread, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I would immediately go. And I said, and back then, and I sound like an old codger when I said it, but she could give me $20 and I could buy everything we needed and have change. Now I have to transfer funds to someone's ATM (laughs) to get them to go to the store for me. And I said, but I, I was cured of sending my children to the grocery store because I did it with Tyler and Mackenzie and even Natalie. And I said, go to the store. We need bread. We need da 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 And I'd give them a little list. They'd go and they would come back with all the wrong brands. And it oh, pissed God. me off. I'd be like, at what point in your childhood have I ever bought Wonder Bread? Ever? Oh, well, it looks so good. And, and so-and-so's mom buys it. We really like it. And I'm like, this stuff is like dough. It's not even bread. And they would just, and they'd buy crap. I'm like, all right, that's it. I'm not sending you to the grocery store anymore. Obviously, you can't even do that. Wrong I would eggs. take pictures of everything. Well, I do that for Daryl, you know. I used to have to do that for him. <laughs> I would print out a grocery list with all photos. I'm like, these are the brands we use. This is what I want. These are the sizes. Because he was just as bad. I offered to do that for Victor, but he found that emasculating. So, Well, then to get it right the first time. <laughs> and then we won't have this problem. Damn it. People. I know. So anyway, she passed, but as she leaves, the DMV starts to fill up. Oh. And it it, it becomes immediately the Petri dish of humanity. Yuck. Anything you could possibly imagine is there. The angry old man who can't work the computer. (laughs) The young, young girl who apparently doesn't know how to read. This young pregnant woman, she might have been eight months pregnant, and she she was holding a one-year-old, and she had all this paperwork with her. She drops all the paperwork, you know, and it's like she's, she sees it. It's funny. She's standing in line. She sees that she drops all the paperwork, and she looks down at like, <sighs> I'm not going to pick that up. She was not in a rush. And then what's lo- what's great is these hostesses at the DMV, they come over and they help her. This woman literally did not leave her side, literally helped her take the test. She was getting her driver's test that day? Yes. Well, I she was doing a I think she was doing a renewal or something cuz oh. at some point you have to you have to take the test again. It's like 10 years or something. So she she goes, "Here, I'll do it for you." So they went to the computer and the the hostess literally clicked the answers for her. Oh. And this, the second she passed, she's like, "Okay, you're done." And they she walked her over to the thing. So we're standing there Malia passes, we're waiting in line to wrap up everything. And all of a sudden, this dog starts wandering around. Now, this is, um, 
there this is this dog it was a little terrier like gray those gray short-haired terriers that look like scotty's yeah like, but it was a mini one okay it's wandering around and here's the thing it's shaking because it's <laughs> old <laughs> and i'm just waiting for this thing to drop a deuce somewhere was it's it looking around service animal <laughs> It was someone's pet. It was not a service dog. No leash, no collar, just wandering around. And then the baby that she sat the baby down because she had to sign something. So the baby immediately toddles over to this other thing where there's a cord sticking out and grabs the cord and starts pulling on it. And the mom's like, no. And so she shoves the thing back under. And all I'm thinking is, God, this floor has just... It's so filthy. It's like you could practically see the fecal matter on the ground. I mean, oh. it's a DMV for God's sake. God only knows. I would have put the baby in a stroller or something. She did not bring a stroller. She was carrying that thing, which definitely should have brought those little umbrella strollers, those $10 strollers you can I get. I know. Buy it from the freaking Goodwill, whatever. Just get one. You know, they're so cheap. So that happened. And then the dog, and I said, oh, God, this dog, she, this baby's going to lunge for this dog because it's squealing with delight that it sees a baby or it sees the dog. And the, and dog the dog's not going to see it because it's blind. It's old. And the dog turns towards the squealing and gets this look of concern. I've never seen a dog look like it had concern before. And I was like, this dog is going to diarrhea or bite or something. And I'm going to be so mad that if this dog touches this kid, you know, because the man, it was, of course, a man who was taking care of his business. He's way leaned over in the DMV person he's working with way in their cubicle space. Oh, my God. You know how people do that? Yeah. I hate it. And I'm like, God, this this desk here, this is your place. Stay on that side. For God's sakes. The dog finally walks over and starts like laying on the man's shoe. <laughs> and I and I'm looking at it going only here, only here would this occur. No maybe the airport. But other than Definitely that, the I airport. Mean, this is what our this is what we are now apparently. This is just who we are. We no longer have any there's no difference between being at home or being in public conducting our business. We are all not uh, not me. But we are. There are people now where we just don't give a shit what's going on anymore. We're just going to allow life to occur, and it's going to be, you know, I mean, there's going to be chickens, you know, goats. I mean, what's next? This is just what it is now. Apparently, we we have no manners, and we have no understanding between private life and public life. It's insane. But we got out of there. There was only one woman, and I. This is it. It may sound funny, but it's it wasn't funny. She was probably in her fifties, and she had a, an adult son who was special needs. Oh, okay. And she's trying to go through the process because he needs an ID. He's obviously oh, okay. an adult, but the problem is, is that everything was fine except they had the birth date wrong on his ID. And now, because you use your ID to fly and stuff, it has to be accurate. Oh, right. And so she had to go through this process. And he is doing fine initially. And then at some point, he had had enough. Well, it was busy in there. It was busy, but it was concerning only because, you know, most people, you get a little worried when you hear loud yelling and stuff like that in public, people get nervous. You get nervous because you don't know what it is. Is it some old man? Is it a guy losing his shit on someone? And it wasn't. It was him. And he was just, you know, she's all, Jacob, please stop. You know, and so he would stop for a while and then he'd start singing. And Mm -hmm. it was fine for me because all I was doing is going, this mother is a freaking hero. Yeah, really? Like, my God, where's the dad? Oh, who knows? He's, He's probably working. But it's like this woman is taking care of her son and she's doing this is something that she will not have to do again probably ever and because i don't think california ids expire the way um, driver's licenses do but you need it for social security for benefits for travel she's like look his birth date is wrong we have to do this process and she had to literally start over it was like frustrating but she was super like all right fine we're doing this and she would go and do it so then on top of everything else thinking that was enough she had her father with her who was probably 90 years old. He needed one of those walker chairs that you can sit in when you're in line. Yeah. And he didn't speak a lick of English. Really? And he had and he had to get an ID too. And I thought, "Oh, they're traveling. That's why they're doing this. They're getting ready to go somewhere." 
And so she has to do all of this so they can all travel. Oh, how frustrating. And she was alone. And I was like, if she even indicates a nuance of assistance, I am on it. Like, I can't just sit there and stare. Like, I am going to help this woman. Yeah. Same with the pregnant girl. If that hostess hadn't come over and helped her, I was like, oh, I'm taking that baby and standing with her. Yeah. Because I'm not going to do this. But I was like, God damn it. The, this is what, like, that is life. Here I am sitting here waiting for my spoiled daughter to come and get her license. And this woman is living life, man. Yeah, I know. Real life. And she got it done. And they walked out. Good. They got, they got it done. I was like, I almost wanted to applaud. I was like, yay. I was so <laughs> proud of her. You oh were God. definitely hormonal. Seriously, Paula. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, for real. Crazy, crazy. Okay, before we go to our ugly and awkward moment, I wanted to ask you something. And the only reason I'm asking you this today is because you and I were discussing a man that you found attractive. You showed me a picture. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I can see how you would think he was cute or whatever. Uh Uh And I was thinking about it. And it doesn't happen often. But if there's someone that I find physically attractive, maybe a a celebrity or somebody, because it's not very often, I immediately go, I try to envision what my life would be like with him. (laughs) I do the same thing. Do you? Because I size them up in that way. So it's like if I see watch John Hamm mm-hmm. on TV or in a movie and I go, God, he's so gorgeous. I would never not be able to just want to be with him all the time. But then you think about it you're like, well, let's think about this. You know, and then I start thinking about him. Like, he's really attractive. I'm not as attractive as he is. So there would be an issue. Does he eat anything? I mean, he's thin, you know, does would would any, you know, and I'm like, could I fatten him up? Would I, you know, and I, I go through all these really weird, random thoughts about what my life would be like if I was with him. Mm-hmm. Do you do that? I mean, to an extent, you know, I, of course, I, I like, you know, the famous people that I like, but the normal people that I think are attractive usually... Yeah. It's not just by by sight. It's usually chemistry based. So right, right. If I meet someone, there's just some sort of weird spark there. And agreed. So, and I do kind of you know get curious what it would be like, but mm-hmm. then reality strikes back that I'm just like, well, they have a whole family and they seem pretty <laughs> happy. So I don't think that's gonna happen. It's just a fantasy. It's just a fantasy. Whoa, whoa. Pretty what much. Is that? It's not the real thing. I don't know. What song is that? Is that Loverboy? I don't Rick know. Rick Springfield? Not sure. It's old. It's very old. Or I don't know. I've been getting into the uh, deep cuts of the 70s lately. I don't know why. Yacht rock or pop? Oh, just like, you know, Paul Davis and, you know, like... Uh, <laughs> Paul Davis? Yeah. I go crazy. Oh! When oh, I you know what I... in your eyes. I told Daryl, I said, if you don't know this song, I don't know who you are. And I played it and it was um, Gino Vanelli. <laughs> what? <laughs> you don't, you know Gino Vanelli. Well, what's the song? I might know the song. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Hello, girl, it's, it's been, been a while. while. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, no, that was just the one you were singing. No, that was, yeah, that was Paul Davis. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Damn it. I know it. Gina Vanelli. I just did it. I just did it to him. And he's like, I don't know this song. I'm like, yes, you do. Gina Vanelli. Here it is. Gina Vanelli. I just want to stop and tell you how much I feel about, about you, baby. baby. You know, I just wanna there's that stop. one. And then there's this is, I know living inside myself. Oh, living inside this hell. Oh, I thought it was this hell. <laughs> Oh, is it? It might be because I don't know about. I don't know Which about is it? Shell. Shell. Hell. Hold on. Here we go. Living inside myself. Here we go. Oh, shell. It is shell. It's shell. Good lord. Who would live inside a shell? Or hell? I don't know. Hell makes But I said, sense. I go, you don't know that song? And he's like, I've never heard that song in my life. I'm like, well, then I don't know who you are. Because I thought we all knew that song. There is a chick on The Voice this year who sings jingles for a living. Really? And she is so good. <laughs> she's so good. I think she could win. And she's really pretty, too. The only thing I didn't like about her 
is that she said, I'm doing this instead of my honeymoon, and boy, has it paid off. And I'm like, oh, I'm sure your husband was thrilled to hear that. He just looks down at his pants, and he's like, <laughs> okay. Starts kicking rocks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll get laid one day. Oh, well. All right. Let's do our ugly and awkward moments of the week. about it we'll talk about it next week but you've been shopping for vegas i have been shopping for vegas did you do anything when you were shopping that was awkward (sighs) no i mean i had olivia with me and so she had lots of things to say i didn't try anything on thank god don't but no i'm i'm striking out i'll tell you that much well i mean i told you where the the website to look at i did look at it i really did but everything's just a solid print Oh, they have they have like the sequency stuff and all that. Okay, well I'll go back and look. But... You need to look. I mean, there's so many options. Like it's hard to you have to go along the top and just go through they because they categorize everything down to the niche. Like, you know, are you going to homecoming or junior prom? Are you going to the club or are you going to dinner? You know, it's like hmm. they have a lot of categories. So you just have to scroll through. I will have to check that out. Yes, you should. All right. Well, I'll tell you my awkward moment. It's not an epic one. But yesterday after Malia passed her driver's test, we decided to celebrate. So we went to a restaurant called BJ's. And I don't know if you've ever been to BJ's. Yeah. I hate the name of it, but whatever. I don't and know what so, they were thinking when they named a restaurant BJ's. I don't know, but it's 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 there's nothing about it that's blowjobby. It's just so but I hate I hate it. I hate the name. <laughs> bothers me every time I'm like oh god i'm like this the restaurant's good yeah. for a chain anyway and daryl likes it because they have like a like a hundred beers on tap or something and so we went there well first of all before i tell you my awkward moment it's it was a weird time of the day it was like three o'clock because oh, okay. her, her, her appointment was at 1 30 in the afternoon so it kind of messes up your whole day when you have a weird appointment time like that mm-hmm. so we're sitting there and so there's no lunch rush or anything but um there's a lot of elderly people there I and see. i i realize that it is true that the elderly people do eat early and so there was a couple of elderly groups sitting and eating meal like full-blown like prime rib dinner meals and stuff there was this couple of two older women they were probably in their late 70s and they were drinking wine mm-hmm. and having a time it was <laughs> hilarious to watch them day drink i mean hilarious they had big goblets of red wine and they were just laughing it up having a great time i'm like okay if that's what it's like to be old i am all in day drinking at three o'clock yes seriously on a thursday i'm all in i loved it i loved it anyway so we're sitting there and um oh by the way i bought that sauna suit i told you about how's it working it works. Really? It works really good. Yeah. But I mean, I, I don't know if I'll see any results right away or anything, but it it's very sweaty. That's for sure. <laughs> Gross. How do you clean it? Well, you can machine wash it, oh. um, but you can also kind of like wash wipe it down with Clorox wipes and stuff uh, if you want. No. Well, you wear clothes under it. You don't wear oh, it with no Oh, okay. So you're not like walking around naked in a blue no. man oh, group ew. thing. No. No, 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 no. No, you wear clothes under it. That's the whole point. So anyway... Um, we had our meal. I had a roast beef sandwich. And so it's time to put it away. And I pick it up to put it in the box. And because I can't do anything normal, <laughs> I'm holding the takeout box over the seat. I don't have it on the table. I'm holding it like over the seat by my by in front of me on my lap. Why? I don't know. So I, because I'm not normal and I can't do anything normal. So I pick up the thing. <laughs> I pick up the sandwich and I go to place it in the thing. And the bottom is soggy. And so all of the meat falls in my lap and I'm holding two pieces of bread and I'm just standing with an empty box and two pieces of bread and I'm looking down and Daryl, this should be his awkward moment, but it was mine. He's like, you got some meat in your lap? <laughs> and I look at him, I'm like, what? And I'm like, what? I'm like, shut up. And I put it, I pick up this big clump of meat and I put it on the plate. You didn't take <laughs> like, it with you? No, some of the meat landed in the in the plate, so I took that meat with some of the bread and put it away. Because I'm like, no, I'm taking this with me now. Now this is happening. <laughs> We're taking it. God. 
So it was embarrassing. That doesn't make any sense. I don't know. <laughs> it's awkward, Paula. All of it. <sighs> Did you drop meat in your lap? And I'm like, what? <laughs> God. Either Malia was rolling her eyes or quietly snickering. Well, she just looks at both of us, and we're just the weird couple she lives with now. Oh, God. And she's, Malia's like, I'll give it two years before I move out. <laughs> two years. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's she, she wants she to do community college. She All of her friends are doing it now because in our area, the first year of, of junior college is free. All you have to pay for is your books. Shut up. Seriously. Wow. So her one, her best friend who could probably go anywhere she wanted outside of the Ivy Leagues has d- her and her mom have discussed it. And she's decided that she's going to do her general education at the JC level because if the first year is free as far as tuition and you're only paying for books. I mean, that is uh, that's a huge savings for a yeah. lot of people. And uh, we're like, yeah, Malia, do it. <laughs> you should do it, too. So she's, they're all going to go, I think, probably to one of the same schools. There's two that are pretty good that they're going to go and get their GE and decide after that. They better register as soon as it's open. Yes, that is true. I know a lot of people who had some of their basic classes waitlisted this year. So. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But anyway. All righty. That's that. Well, good times. Good times. <laughs> yes. So I think that's a wrap. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, we're getting close to Halloween, so you want to jump onto Amazon.com uh, via our web page. And uh, there's still some good costumes. I bought my daughter's costume through there. She's going to be Little Red Riding Hood. Nice. So uh, I got my wig on there. Oh. I ordered it because I decided I was going to do Mermaid. Yeah, that's right. You told me that. Well, I did. I basically did an Olivia. I I put the wig in my basket on Amazon Mm -hmm. and I said, you know what? I'm just going to wait and decide. I'm not sure if I want to do that. And then went back, found it again and put it in my basket again. Mm -hmm. So I have two now. Oh, you bought two. (laughs) Yeah, on accident. So I said, why are there two in here? And of course, my my face, I'm like, what? why are there two wigs in here? <laughs> Malia, you want a purple wig? I asked her, I go, Malia, do you want this mermaid wig? She's like, um, no. And I said, it's cool. It's a really cool wig. And she's like, I don't know. You know, and I went, all right, well, I don't know what to do. And I'm like, maybe Paula will want it. <laughs> you know, because like at this point, I don't know what to do. Uh, yeah so, that's uh that's funny <laughs> i guess i could i guess i could just i mean i can you know and daryl's like well you know you can return it i'm like i know but i just it's such a such pain a, in the ass I yeah need it. but I, I probably will but it wasn't that expensive that was what was so great about it being on amazon is it wasn't much yeah um, i got olivia's for like 22 dollars yeah it so. was it was pretty economical oh, also finally before we say goodbye the first episode of our reality tv podcast has dropped the little carnival podcast it's 15 minutes of your time we talk about TLC reality shows one at a time. This one was 90 Day Fiance before the 90 Days. From what I understand, it's hilarious. So maybe you should listen. <laughs> and then also please visit lipandclip.com to pick up some makeup or skincare items. I need to get some more skincare items. Mm. My face looks like a pizza. So uh, also their holiday stuff is they dropped a preview of the holiday stuff. Oh, exciting. There's a cute little Christmas tree light that I want. I don't know how big it is, but if it's not ridiculous, I'm buying it. It's really cute. Cool. So I think other than that, we will let you go for now. We will see you on Wednesday. Bye. Bye. That's a wrap. Thanks for listening and sharing the show. See you next time on The Ugly Truth.